Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Lunar Alchemy. My name is John. Of course, I'm here with Bella to discuss the transit through gate 50. This carries us through the, the gene key pathway from the shadow of corruption to the city of harmony. And the gift is that of equilibrium. It leads us to this incredible archetype known as the maestro and brings us into the possibility of understanding different elements of our experience all being brought together in one fantastic symphony of life and so i'm looking forward to our conversation today because this is one of those gene keys that I feel has such a, an important position, uh, not only in relationship to other gene keys and the development of human evolution through consciousness, but also through the entire wheel, every single gene key as it serves as a fulcrum in this entire process. And Perhaps today we might even get to discuss a little bit about what it means to understand the Illuminati, because this is a word that has greatly come into our awareness over the past maybe 10 or 15 years in overall society. And I think there's a lot more that we have yet to understand about the nature of human consciousness and how it's evolving through this particular lens. So, <laughs> so many parts to cover, Bella. Um, where do you like to focus with this one? Because when we have the maestro, there's obviously an entire orchestra that we could focus on and there's all these different elements. So where do you look to when we have this kind of transformative uh, focal point amidst all of the other things that we, we might see. I like to look at the geometry of where it is. So I situate the 50 in terms of geometry. And the first place I will go to is the wheel. So we have 64 gates and the wheel can either be how the planets go around the wheel, the astrological wheel, the constellations, the gates. So sun takes one year. And right now, why we're here today is because the sun is in its very, very last part of the 50. It's six days. And now it's the last day of those six days. And then in our journey of deconditioning, we stay 40 days in each gate. And then we have 40 days, of course, in that 50. And that is the midpoint of our deconditioning. And it's that equilibrium. Actually, the equilibrium is once our true self is more enlivened, we could say, where we are embodying our true self more than our not self, then we call that the, the midpoint. And if we start our journey in the eternal child in gate three, that's exactly on the other side, the programming partner. And the keynote here for the first line is called the immigrant. And that's like when we are ready to inhabit our heart and live from higher frequency, which is not connected to the lower chakras of, of me, 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 but understanding what it is to be part of a larger organism, which is partly for me what that code and ring of Illuminati or the 50 and the 44 together, seeing the synergy, seeing the orchestra, hearing the sound of this one organism that, that is humanity. And, and I believe that the higher frequency of the 50 where we are waking up to that and we also see our impact in the whole, like that maestro just by by moving in space, he's actually creating a frequency uh, that is heart-based and that is a higher frequency than, than the dissonance, the fragmentation, the interference and the corruption of the low frequencies of the 44 and the 50. Um, so, and I'm not gonna, let's stay there, but I also feel that it's important to look at it in terms of the circuitry with the 44 and the 50 being tribal. And I also feel it can be interesting to look at it in the Delta stream where we have a stream that is actually going around the G center and it has to do with our individual self and our self in community. So these are placements 
or in the geometry where I feel that the 44 and the 50 and the 50 by itself uh, are standing out and can give us a better understanding than just intellectually rem remembering what Ross said and what Richard said. Yeah, so the the 44 and the 50 forming the the codon ring of Illuminati, giving us kind of a an, a, an additional insight into uh, what's really happening here. And what kind of strikes me about this archetype of the maestro, you said he kind of gets up there and is through the through the nature of his movement kind of is orchestrating this deep harmony that occurs. <clears throat> and when I think about that, I, have, I mean, having a, a musical background, uh, I often imagine these various conductors that I've worked with over the years and how some of them seem to take on this larger aura, this larger capacity to, to not only listen, but also direct the movement of sound in a, in a firing to maestro and then um about how the um how it functions through a human being when i'm when i'm thinking about okay what does it say about gene key uh 50 oftentimes i get this idea that that there's this degree of unconsciousness in the person who's functioning in this role, meaning by their very, you kind of said their movement through space. And so I imagine this maestro is this being who actually never stops this movement of going with the music. There's never anything else. There's never a beginning or ending to the symphony. There's just this constant constant movement here and when a person has this you know energy functioning in them bringing harmony into a group with the individual parts happening around them but just by nature of the function of the energy in their aura it brings others into this this sort of synergistic harmony and so so it feels like a very very mysterious gene key in terms of how it works when we think about having our sort of self and not self strategies of of our vehicle as if okay so we follow our strategies great and we do our do the self and somehow Happens, rather than us doing something that that feels in harmony or not in harmony with being the maestro and there's kind of a there, there are so many of the gifts and the shadows where it feels to me as if our mind can focus on oh you know let's root out corruption let's make everything equal and balance all of the elements that are present and let's identify all of the things and it sounds to me as if that isn't really how the maestro works at all <laughs> and i wonder if that to some extent has something to do with how we experience corruption versus what the corruption of this gene key actually is inherently and and how that kind of like flows through us i mean i feel here where we are right next to the 28 as well it's really always on the inside the corruption is really only or always on the inside and i definitely feel with the geometry we're just looking at i feel the heart is the center point and when we're not actually in the embodiment of the heart is it's going to be corruption and i do feel that with the 28 and i'm thinking about 28 even the 11 although it's not here 
I'm thinking about all these dark archetypes and somehow here with the 5th and the 28th, we are taking responsibility for the inner corruption or the corruption of the psyche or the corruption of the mind. And it really brings us in, 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 in. And it's even that part of the wheel where we speak about initiation from the 25 and the 51. It's like, it's in to the heart, it's in. And on that way, as we are, combining it's not really that we are getting rid of the, the little eye or the ego it's really that initiation where we have always a breath is what i feel between the the, the ego the i the ego center the heart center and then the g the true self uh, that has to do with direction and love and identity or true self so what comes to me is just that the corruption is always on the inside and for the 50 and also the 44 uh, it is so easy to point to the outside. And even the 32 were in last week, the guardian. Well, how can I be the guardian when China is having all this, um, uh, all these, how do you say, like the, with the environment, how they are destroying the environment? How can I be the guardian? I mean, there's so many reasons for, for why, because everything is corrupt on the outside. I need to be corrupt as well, or at least I don't have to step up, up to my heart because it's not going to make a difference. And really for me, the 44 and the 50 and even the 20, 28, it's like when I'm on purpose, when I'm living fully now in this moment, again, that's the, the energy that is going to influence in all, in all relationships. And actually somehow here, as we're going into Scorpio, uh, I would say that it's also in intimate relationships, it's also through sexuality that the corruption is going to show itself and also where it's a very powerful place for starting to take responsibility for that corruption. And that's really, can only really happen if we're not into orgies. And I don't think that that's how we're going to heal the world. It's really how we're going to step in, step up and, and, and look inwards for harmony, corruption. Mm. Yeah, so when I think about this inward movement and the fact that it's so, today it seems perhaps more obvious than ever, although when I think about times in history when there was corruption, it was very, very easy to, to see it here and there for some reason the, the idea of um al capone and prohibition in the united states kind of like came to mind and and there's this sort of corruption everywhere where everyone can see all these evil speakeasies and you know <laughs> things going on in society that was you know corrupt from one level or another and we can see it outside of us, but we don't necessarily go inside because we see our, our, perhaps our morals as being that which is, that which is in, should be in harmony with the rest of the world. When we have this strong moral base of morality, of goodness, it feels as if the rest of the world, if they would just be good people then the harmony would manifest except that inherent in perspectives of that nature if there's this underlying fear of the disharmony itself and that fear is what's creating the corruption in the first place so we have this like this like catch 22 of like, well, why isn't there harmony? Because there's corruption. Well, why is there corruption? Because we're not in harmony with ourselves. You know, we're not in harmony with what's present. And, and that inward focus of saying like, how, well, how do we be in harmony with corruption that's outside of us? How can we be, you know, and we just came from this gene key of the guardian where where a large portion of that energy is about standing up for that inner truth and and expressing it through your being in you know in kind of harmony with your makeup and here we are 
almost being asked to say, oh, if we're going to run around and see um, the the aspects of society that aren't that aren't serving the collective and call it out anywhere there's there's this form of um, something that you know is negative for the collective and we call it out um, that somehow the harmony will manifest but it makes me, when I think about this, I think about the classical music of the 20th century and all of the experimentation that went into things like atonal music, polytonal music, and these forms of music that incorporate large amounts of dissonance, rhythmic dissonance, harm, melodic dissonance, harmonic dissonance, all of these things coming together and like, creating this sort of you know what is what are we experiencing here and and um as if we humanity itself like we're still trying to catch up to the maestros of the early 20th century who were you know bringing this possibility of how we can experience harmony with all of the dissonance that's present So, I mean, it's, it's like this maestro, it, it, it almost seems as if the 50 is another one of these listening gene keys, or at least that the entrance to this gene key is about listening. Maybe, maybe the 50 is more about the movement in harmony, but, but uh, I just kind of wonder if there's, if you have some ideas around, you know, we kind of got, I feel like when we got started with the 57 a few a couple of weeks back, you know, we were like, oh, we're getting into the listening phase of some of these gene keys. And here we have we have like this this maestro who has done all of the deep listening needed to understand the harmony. And I wonder if this is one of the possible entry points to experiencing that that archetype in a deeper way. I hear you speak about music and I, I just feel that you have an understanding that I don't that I don't have for sure when it comes to music and you're mentioning the 57 that's here and I'm wondering in this whole thing with the delta keys if listening in a way is, is the key and there is individual listening in press like individual listening in presence right eye the 57 and then the presence of the 20 and then we have the emotional expression and emo like there, there, there is something with all these keys. And then I'm also wondering for you as a musician, when you start to see the diatonic table and you have the notes here with those keys that are part of the Delta stream. And I almost feel like I want to bring, <laughs> bring back the conversation to you just because I don't have the genius <laughs> in terms of music on the, of the musical, that you have? Mm. I have to say, I've, I've never looked at this before, and this is incredibly fascinating to see. Um, obviously, for, for everyone who's been studying the gene keys, if you've looked at gene key 22 or the bodies, there are seven, seven bodies to our larger being. This perspective and when we look at our musical scale the way that we have different notes there we number we letter them in the alphabet a b c d e f g and then following g comes another a which is the same exact pitch except it's at a higher frequency it's at a higher octave and that's what what you see there at the bottom with the eight as the octave and and what it refers to is essentially a um a doubling of the original frequency that that of any particular pitch if you go take one pitch and you go up an octave 
the higher one is double the frequency of this lower one. And then all of the seven in between form the different frequencies in between that doubling. And in the history of music, particularly before modern times, before the advent of radio and some of the um, things that occurred during the 20th century with music regarding the pitch of music. Many composers were directly connected with what is referred to as the music of the spheres, which is also related or referenced in the gene keys in a variety of these. And it was understood by many composers that particular keys, whether it was D or E or F or G, any of them, they carried a specific frequency that related to these, the impact on the human body. And so in order to compose a particular piece, they would choose the key that correlated to the essence of the sound of that music, that, that impact on, on the body or on the bodies. And so looking on, if you look in these life focus uh, areas, purity of purpose, grace in relating, peace through thought, transparency of the heart, selflessness in speech, harmony of higher mind, attuned to spirit, and then finally collective breath at the octave. Um, these make me think of the the what it was that many of these composers were aspiring to in terms of not only not only cultivating their own genius but of using that genius to funnel something essential about the harmony of the cosmic order to all those with ears to listen and and through that process actually impacting the evolution of humanity as a collective. I mean, it's really, really profound. And if, if, if you love music on it, no matter what that happens to be, this is a, an incredible, this, I could probably spend hours and hours contemplating this particular chart right here <laughs> and just looking at, hmm, how does, how do each of these layers of the body relate to these these different sounds. And when you look at musical harmony and musical dissonance, when you put all of these, put different combinations of these notes together, it even brings in deeper, more complex awareness. Really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this one. And for even here, you, hearing you speak about it from a musical perspective, it's just, it's music to my ears. So thank you. Well, it's so cool that, you know, here we are with the 50 and it says the, the harmony of the higher mind. And um, that takes me into this, uh, and it corresponds to the third eye or the sixth chakra, depending on how you're seeing these, these various bodies in our energy. And it, it implies, I think, for me, there's always been this sort of um, difficulty in understanding the cosmic mind versus our egoic mind that tends to run around in circles and has this sort of running scroll of endless thoughts, words, and everything, which I think are kind of the, the basis for some of the gene keys shadows of, you know, like 62 and intellect, or um, I've forgotten there's a, there's another one that's all wrapped up in words and everything. And um, the difference between, um, between our 
general understanding of how our mind works and this larger cosmic mind that it appears works through music or sound, you know, in, in some deeper way. And, um, you know, that just, that just kind of makes me think of that listening circuit and how there is a cosmic sound behind all of reality. And, and as our frequency increases through our evolutionary or involutionary processes that we're going through, I think it brings us in closer capability of actually being able to listen to it. <laughs> so Bella, when when we're talking about so here here we have all of this music going on. What happens in a group or in an individual when the maestro becomes present? What is the actual what is it that they're actually doing, whether it's by their movement with the reality they're conducting, or it's just their presence of the aura, what's actually happening? What is the, like, what is the impact of this energy when, it's, when it becomes present? And, and what is happening to the people for whom that energy is maybe not yet fully manifested through their being? Brady was asking me right before in the chat about the sun and the moon and understanding what's what the difference is also between magnetic and electric and how electromagnetic that's the nature right of, of this reality and what it feels like with the 50 and also the 44 those tribal gates they are magnetic and I feel like it's beyond the mind it's not really that the attractiveness of the 44 and the 50 at the higher frequency, it's that we kind of want to be in that aura. And I feel that that goes back all the way to 57 and 48, like feeling the unease that's there in the vibration everywhere in the collective in a way uh, of inadequacy or fear of failure in the 32 or fear of tomorrow in the, in the 57. So all these fears that are there, what I feel is that somehow the 44 and the 50 are giving us a break from that because we come into that aura and suddenly it feels like it makes sense. And then we want to be in that. And you know, when it comes to human design, that is a danger with a splenic center because people with open splenic center, they are gonna have this feel good when they are in a defined spleen. And it's gonna be instantaneous. It's not like on the other side of the awareness of the emotional where there's a wave. And if you're not an emotional being and you're in the aura of an emotional being, you're gonna to have to go through the wave and then maybe after it's clarity or deeper wisdom. Here, there's something that just happens in the moment. And that's why we're saying in the not self, you're holding on to things that are not good for you because in a way it's a trick. You feel like you have that well that, that well being, that feeling good, feeling good in, in the spleen, but it's connecting to the defined spleen. And I feel that having the 44 and the 50 there, there's something. And the same thing with Illuminati or some of these even groupings where you feel like you're one of them and you feel good. But at the, but at the same time, like you say, it depends what, what's the, it might be an initial feeling good, but then is that being with a defined spleen in a high frequency or not? Is those Illuminati, whatever groupings it is, are they really in, in a higher frequency or is it just this first thing of like okay now I'm defined now I feel safe and now I don't have to care about these fears because I I belong here with this being or this group and that those dynamics I feel are interesting to think about as we are looking into the, the, the splenic gates in general mm. yeah and it's so interesting to read about the Illuminati from Richard's perspective because in the in the sort of cultural awareness of the Illuminati th through, you know, there's that author, Dan Brown, who had a, there were a couple of movies made about his, um, these sort of wild goose chase conspiracy 
conspiracies surrounding the Vatican and the Illuminati and these secret groups who are pulling the strings of, of the world. And that, that Richard suggests that that's not the only field of Illuminati that exists. That's just the field that we are able to experience because of the corruption that's present in our fear system, essentially, that, that our fear system is imposing upon our, the expression of what is coming through our DNA. And that there are higher forms of Illuminati that are, that are equally functioning you know, or equally potentially functioning in our, in our collective world. And that, you know, because there's this idea of, there's another movie like Eyes Wide Shut about these secret societies and, and the sort of twisted perverse rituals that take place in order to gain membership within them. And, you know, people talk about these things active in the United States, like the Skull and Bones Society, and you know, like the upper levels of of the Masonic Temple, and all, all of these different things, where it's like that's the Illuminati, and yet it's so interesting that here in this G key, the Illuminati is about cosmic order. It's about the manifestation of the perfection of harmony, and and this this music all coming of life, all coming together and allowing us to be kind of our, the instruments of consciousness. And um, so it, it's just such a, for me, it's a fascinating contemplation to wonder like, oh, how will our, our perspective on this, overall idea evolve over time as humanity grows and changes and and you know will there someday be movies about this sort of higher frequency illuminati that's functioning through equilibrium and what will that look like you know um it's interesting too to me that the 59 is mentioned as one of the very um, important gene keys in relationship to the 50 with its its shadow of dishonesty around secret societies keeping secrets to some extent is on some level at the very least it's not transparent and you know at worst it's completely dishonest in terms of like what is the true intentions behind a certain uh, facade you know and and so it just like seeing that that delta circuit and then considering all of these different um pathways that are coming through with it it it's really a fascinating look at, at where humanity can be i wonder bella if you you want to look at if you have ideas about the elements that you might want to look at with this one, because I, I feel as if there's something really kind of, I'm not going to say hidden, but it's definitely of interest when we think about harmony and what's happening in this. This is one of the hexagrams where I feel that speaking about wind as wood, you know, it's it more feels like wood than wind here in in the 57 or you, you can see here wind on the bottom and, and then fire on top so this being the 57th jinky that usually we think about it as the wind so you can see unease intuition clarity wind over wind is the 20th is the 57th and then here desire light and rapture lightness and rapture that is the 30 the fire starter uh, so here it's a uh, Gentle wood fuels the fire above, brewing magic in a good way by feeding the fire with the highest intent. And yeah, I mean, here, as we are speaking about feeding the fire, we kind of realize that, <laughs> I mean, we are feeding a monster here or we're feeding something 
that can definitely change alchemically for for a lot of us in like just you know how how fire is is moving and and somehow we were saying in the beginning oh what if corruption is just this or just this but here i like i like how it says corruption is desiring anise so somehow as we are having that data corruption whether it's our mind or whatever it is and we're continuing that somehow it's the same thing as saying yeah i want to have anise i want to have fragmentation because we just that's what we are fueling that's what we are that's the fuel that we're using um, yeah and it's it's almost as if you know if you ask anybody there's pretty much nobody who's gonna just stand up and say like oh yeah my desire is to create unease in my body but uh, like that doesn't really i don't think that's exactly how how that happens but if you look at what people actually do desire and how they engage with that desire. What that does in the body is produces unease, whether we're looking at desires born from consumerism, where we put our body in a state of not having that which, that which we need in order to be safe and survive, or you know what have you, we could apply that to any many different things. And it's like that drive of desire in us leads us into a state of unease, which is partly why, why it's this sort of evolutionary force. It's like it drives us to take action in the direction of the desire until we can, we can sort of gain enough perspective, enough experience or enough frequency moving through our system to be able to become in a state of lightness around it. I also, I think it's interesting also to look at the, um, with this one, obviously we, you mentioned wood and wind. Fire also requires wind to some extent. If you had a vacuum, a room with a vacuum and you put some wood in there and somehow you were able to, to try to create a spark through friction or something, there would never even be a spark because there's no air in there. It can't, it can't have the, the reaction. So wind and wood together is kind of what grows that fire. And then the image in the I Ching is the cauldron. And, and to a certain extent, there's a connotation of, of the word in the, in the Chinese, which is designed for, it's called a ting which is this vessel that is kind of, does, it, it sort of was associated with more developed society. Um, and there's an interesting kind of a, a, kind of a thing with this, this whole idea of corruption and equilibrium and what, what is it, what are we putting in the pot? What kind of ingredients are we adding into that pot and how nourishing then does that become? And that kind of like draws another connection between the 50 and the 27, the, the nourisher, you know, like the cauldron is like this societal place where an entire community can be fed in harmony or it can be this sort of like separation in hierarchy where only the, the developed society has access to the golden cauldron that has ingredients in it where lower society in the hierarchy, they get the scraps from the tables of the rich, you know? So, I mean, there's just so many, to me, this, this particular <laughs> gene key, I just feel like it goes in so many directions. Yeah, I have one more thing. And again, this is Sergio that I wanna share with everyone. And it's, it's also something the same way that you were saying about the table with the music. Um, we could definitely speak about this for an hour or more. So let's, let's look at it together. Um,
So here the mm -hmm. quadrant would be the verb to of sublimation. Um, yeah, so that's how he's sitting here. And if we go a little bit deeper into it, it says sublimation to proportionate the reception of light, work to bless, work for blessing. And I'm thinking here, well, the other thing with how Sarah Joe is looking at the elements is that instead of just saying it's fire and wind, he's also connecting it to, to astrology and the signs. So he's speaking about Virgo energy and in the which is the gentle, the wind, kind of our mind and, and how it mo moves like our mind, Virgo energy. And then this is Gemini energy, fire. It it is always touching everything. That's it's an adherent in a way. It's like that's how that's how fire moves. Um, so here we could say he's sitting here in the background of Gemini and I where everything is moving all the time and wanting to touch you in a way, right? And there's even double kind of personalities in it. And then we have this Virgo, which is much more organized, that's sitting there sublimating the light that is coming in. And I wonder as well, speaking about the Illuminati and the and, and the light, somehow it feels like the cauldron. If we are going to look at this, it, there is something about the process of involution and having the light or the wisdom or you know how we however we, we see that that's coming in that it has to be a, it's a process. You know, we cannot just open up to all the archangels and all the Illuminati if we think about that ascendant more like ascending masters that that Richard is speaking about in the code ring, like it has to come, it's a process of involution where it comes into form. And it feels like the fifth is somehow it's understanding that process and sublimating that process so that we're not just blasted open. Like, can it be too much harmony? Maybe there is something here that it's connected definitely with the light so that we can take it in little by little and upgrade ascending by little. And I guess that that's what the fifth is saying. We cannot just go, it's the midpoint of the wheel. We cannot just go from complete not self and blindness to complete illumination. There, when it comes to this density of the body, there is a process of, of playing the music until we become the music. And maybe that's what the fifth is helping us do. His, his, the master is, is helping us to Tune into the music and then little by little becoming the, the tones, the note, the higher octave. I love that you brought this into the discussion because there is an aspect to this hexagram that is kind of this key of, of the evolution of consciousness. Because when we look at wood and air with fire, <clears throat> what is actually happening there when when we look at it from an alchemical perspective well how do we produce wood you put water into the earth and from that process the seeds sprout and hence grows a tree and then how do we transform that tree into something of spirit of a spiritual nature for humanity in terms of, of nourishing our, our bodies. But you take the wood and you add air to that and fire, and that produces what's necessary for our nourishment is in terms of where we are. And when we look at that whole process, what we're looking at is this entire process of sublimation. So, water in the earth that's our emotions inside our body and so those emotions from our evolutionary standpoint are there to provide our inner seeds with the possibility of sprouting of growing and of producing fruits and flowers for instance but then that's not the end of the stage of the stages of transformation. There's something beyond that. What happens when the tree has moved through its process of flowering and fruiting and it's winter and the leaves have fallen 
and the limbs die and break off. Well, dead, old, dead, dry wood is the best stuff to burn. And when we bring that air and fire into the element now, that form, the flames of fire are just light. There's nothing. So uh, I've forgotten now the, the um, I've forgotten now, Bella, maybe you remember the gene You froze key a little that, bit. Oh, you did froze. I? Yeah, you froze. So I, I didn't, I, I was like focusing on yeah. freezing. Yeah, the, um, I was just saying it, it transforms the wood into spirit from the alchemical perspective. Or from the your internet connection is super weird. I think it's yours. So it was okay until so, now. You were just fr fr freezing like one yeah. word here and there, but now it's difficult to, to hear. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, I thought I had that solved, but well. Um, can you hear me okay at the moment? Yeah, Is now I can hear you perfect. Yeah. yeah, you're a little bit blurry, but I can hear you. So you're okay. saying, yeah, I heard, I still didn't hear the whole thing. Yeah. So I was saying the, the wood is what comes from our body. The earth, what grows from our body, can be transmuted into spirit, which is the process of evolution as we speak about it in the gene keys. And so this particular gene key 50, together with, um, and I've forgotten, Bella, maybe perhaps you remember the gene key that is um, watering the seed and it begins to grow um, out of the earth. It's, uh, um, I'll have to think of that another time, but it takes this process of moving our physical bodies and our emotional experience into a, a growth process that becomes spiritual in nature. And the 50 is that final, final key of that sublimation. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, Bella, do you have anything else to share while whilst my um, my freezing? That odd that I'm freezing amongst this fire over wood, you know. Perhaps uh, perhaps we need to add some warmth to this whole process. <laughs> no, I think we're good. I think we're good. We'll be here tomorrow, I guess, Tuesday, an hour later. I, I think we're going to speak about purification tomorrow and detox, possibly purification uh, for the health call oh. that is sponsored by Purium, but not necessarily on the conversation of Purium, more about health and embodiment in general and weaving that with human design and gene keys. So that kind of goes back to the body and the wood and the process, right? Um, yeah. And the harmony of the body as opposed to the corruption, I guess of the systems yeah pretty pretty awesome segue there i mean everything flows in harmony of course <laughs> okay so thank you all for joining us really appreciate your presence may this uh last day of the gene key bring you all of the nourishment that your spirit desires or needs um, and bring you into harmony with all of the elements of your life, be it corrupt or in equilibrium. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you next Monday. Again, um, unfortunately, there will be a 28 transit in the, in the meantime. Um, so, but uh, we, we will, 
we'll see you with what follows follows that next time we come in and and uh, i'm sure there will be some fun tie-ins there so sending loving presence to each of you and we'll say goodbye for now and go into our transmission with our members and um, have a beautiful illuminated day bye, bye.